fight me. Yeah, I mean, I, I think our biggest thing what we try to preach on defense is, you know, we, we have an animal philosophy. All we're trying to do is outplay the opposing defense. We don't care what our offense is doing. It doesn't matter. You know, so our, our kids just got to understand, however many negative yards plays they have, we got to have one more. However many turnovers they got, we got to have one more. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how we get on the field. It matters how we get off the field. And I think those older guys are starting to buy into that philosophy and understand it. It ain't about them. It's about us competing the defense. If we beat the defense every time, unless Coach Brumfield screws it up on special teams, we'll win. All right? So just outplay the other guys. And I, I think they're starting to do that. That was Pete Golding talking about his defense at the start of the 2017 season, August 12th, 2017, via the Inside Roadrunner Sports YouTube channel, uh, where he gave an extended interview that I thought was uh, quite honestly awesome. Because talking about beating the other defense as opposed to beating the offense is just a different way of thinking about football as a defensive coordinator. And you could see that his 2017 defense was absolutely awesome at UTSA. We're talking about finished 8th in scoring, 2nd in first down defense, 19th in pass efficiency. I mean, they improved to a staggering degree, so staggering that he ended up getting a call from Nick Saban to be the co-defense coordinator inside linebackers coach last year. And he's recently been promoted to defensive coordinator with Tosh Deploy moving on to coach the defensive line at Cleveland. But we're in this this season of clinics for high school and football, uh, high school football and college football coaches. So if you get a chance to go to some clinics, I wouldn't necessarily say that you shouldn't go see Brent Venables. You know, I wouldn't say that you shouldn't go see the new guy at UGA, Dan Lenny, just promoted to defensive coordinator. Shout out to Glenn Schumann, who was named the co-defense coordinator inside linebackers coach and gave DeAndre Baker's acceptance speech at the Jim Thorpe Award. Really, really enjoyed listening to him. I would also say that you wouldn't be remiss if you got to see Pete Golding do his thing because that's a guy that got his job at Alabama after a five-hour interview where he was just up at the whiteboard taking Nick Saban's questions, and they were talking scheme, and they were talking personnel, and they were talking groupings, and that is how he won his job. But before that, you could say, maybe you should go hear what Nick Saban has to say about coaching because, after all, this guy has put 12 coordinators and 14 assistants into head coaching gigs in the last 15 years. Five of those have been NFL head men. For perspective, Bob Stoops can claim 10 assistants who have earned head coaching gigs. Mike Leach, Chuck Long, Mark Mangino, Jay Norvell, Bo Pelini, Mike Stoops, Kevin Sumlin, Kevin Wilson, Lincoln Riley, and recently Josh Heupel. As soon as Kale Gundy decides he's tired of Oklahoma, I expect him to get one too. But Saban didn't build his staff from the ground up. He didn't raise those guys from pups. He goes to different coaches and coordinators that he can share something with that he thinks he can learn something from. And the guy that came across his radar at UTSA was obviously Golding. But I found it kind of interesting that Golding got his start from a guy named Ron Roberts, who was head coach Delta State and now is the defensive coordinator in the Sun Belt for University of Louisiana, ULL. But Ron Roberts has coached so many great defensive names to date that I'm starting to wonder why this guy isn't on somebody's staff somewhere in a Power 5 conference because we're talking about a guy who helped groom not just Pete Golding, but LSU defensive coordinator Dave Aranda, Alabama secondary coach Carl Scott, Louisville defensive coordinator Brian Brown, and Kansas defensive coordinator D.J. Elliott. At Delta State, those boys worked for next to nothing, and they had so many different hats. We're talking about guys that coached up the defense, broke down the film, put in the game plan in Excel, and were financial aid counselors all in a day's work. That is how you make a man that knows how to deal with people, who knows how to be personal, personable, and knows exactly what his kids need to hear to do the job well. And I'm, I'm looking at Ron Roberts' resume, and I'm looking at the guys that he's put into outstanding positions. I got to see that this man is smiling. Because along with this, this is a guy that became famous in coaching circles. You know, Bruce Feldman has this great story on Pete Golden. He gets into this in The Athletic. He became famous in coaching circles as a coach in an incubator, right? So you would have guys that coached on both sides of the ball, and Ron Roberts was not shy about putting them up on the whiteboard and saying, tell me what you see. 
So much so that he had a defensive line coach that he wanted to have draw up some offensive scheme and some offensive game plans. And my man drew all circles. And Ron Roberts had to say, hey, you know, with skill positions, we need to know who's eligible, so you need to use numbers or letters. Just little things to tweak and give you an opportunity to succeed. And I really enjoyed hearing those parts of Ron Roberts because that's not a thing that many coaches, let alone managers, are comfortable doing. They're not going to give you opportunities to fail. They expect you to succeed. And in giving all these guys opportunities to try on different hats, to coach on both sides of the ball, and to have some say in what they do on both sides of the ball is how you make a coach. Because from year to year, you might coach running backs, you might coach linebackers. As a matter of fact, there's a guy on Oklahoma staff right now by the name of Roy Manning who hadn't coached cornerbacks in some time, and everybody's asking, wow, can this dude actually coach in the secondary because we know him as an outside linebackers coach, inside linebackers coach? Yeah, he can. And he's coached running backs. And he coached DBs out at Michigan where he played linebacker. Being a football coach means being able to coach every position and coach all the schemes. And in doing all of that, you get to develop your own philosophy, and that's one of the things that Pete Golding has become famous for here recently. I mean, not only did... He put the shackles on Oklahoma's run game in the Sugar Bowl. But he's come up with this very cool pressure look where he can get pressure with four without sending five or six and run some sorts of zone that doesn't actually make you vulnerable. You don't have to send five or six. You can send four. And because over the course of the year, he made a point of blitzing from all 11 positions at one point or another Offensive coordinators have to think about it. Offensive coordinators have to be able to counter a safety blitz if that safety shows. Now, because he was not shy about moving his pieces around and giving different looks, making new things look old and old things look new, you're able to confuse the quarterback because that's what you're trying to do. And you saw a little bit of this in the Super Bowl where Bill Belichick essentially took Sean McVay out of Jared Goff's ear. Because right when they were supposed to stop talking with that 15 seconds left on the play clock, that is when Bill Belichick and Brian Flores, who is the new head man at Miami, would shift the Patriots' defense to give Jared Goff a different look and make Jared Goff make the adjustments at the line. And we saw that, at least in that game, he could not do it. So... It's become interesting to me to see how do you make a Pete Golding? How do you make a Brian Brown? How do you make the next great defense coordinator? And what it comes down to is, are you willing to go to a place like Delta State in the Gulf South? Are you willing to go to a place like ULL, sleep on a couch, volunteer coach, try to get a job, doing something, anything, coaching whatever you can get your hands on so that you have an opportunity to try some stuff? So you have an opportunity to get on Ron Roberts' whiteboard, draw up some scheme, and see if this will work. And they were tinkering all the time. And I expect they'll do some tinkering at Alabama, but the thing about Alabama and Clemson and Georgia and why I was saying earlier that perhaps you don't necessarily want to go to those clinics right away is because you can run almost anything you want when you have the kind of athletes that Alabama, Georgia, and Clemson have on defense. But if you're really good at drawing up your scheme, you're going to be that much more difficult to stop. You're going to be that much more difficult to score on. And you heard in the Pete Golding sound that he focuses on outplaying the other defense, which means that if you gave up 600 yards passing in the Big 12, long as you didn't give up 601 or they gave up 601, you count that as a win. And I think that is a great way to approach defense in this day and age where we feel overrun by guys like Lincoln Riley, by guys like Sean McVay, by guys like even Cliff Kingsbury who seem to be able to just pick these defenses apart. And now you got a guy like Pete Golding who's saying, nah, I, I know what I'm doing. And you got another guy like Dave Rand who says, nah, I know what I'm doing. And now you got two guys at Georgia after losing Mel Tucker in Dan Lanning and Glenn Schumann who said, nah, I know what I'm doing. And I'm learning from Kirby Smart all the time. I think these are the things that we need to keep in mind when we're talking about offense and defense in college football. We need to continue to try to look at the guys who are doing it best at the lower divisions because defensive scheme moves up, offensive scheme moves up. 
things are late getting to college football and to the NFL. The things that they ran in the NFL last year, Oklahoma's been running since Lincoln Riley got here. The things that they're running at the Los Angeles Rams now are the things that they've been running at Alabama for some time. And you can look down into the lower ranks of football where you're not going to get a lot of eyes, you're not going to get a lot of film, and you're going to have guys that just aren't the kind of athletes that you're not going to have at the Division One level, so you're going to have to be creative. You're going to have to do what Sean Gleason did at Princeton, new guy at Oklahoma State. They ran so many motions and gave so many looks that they had those Ivy schools wondering which way the ball was going. And if you can do some hidden ball tricks on an offense, that's fine. But if you're a guy like Pete Golding, you're also going to try to tinker with the offense. You're going to show. You remember the amoeba defense that Rex Ryan used to run where it seemed like all 11 guys were capable of rushing at any time. They were all standing up. They were all moving around. Problem is, if you try to do that kind of thing at a place like Oklahoma, you got to be willing to give up a few big scores or you got to recruit better athletes. When we come back, I'm going to talk some NBA. I'm going to talk some MVP. I know that Anthony Davis is ruining the NBA for a lot of you. But I think there's reason to be excited about this All-Star game tonight and about the rest of the season going forward. This is Fight Me with RJ Young on KYAL, the sports animal.